Hey everyone, uh, this is a replay of my round one match of the Metroid Prime Randomizer 2023 tournament that was originally broadcasted on Speed Gaming. Uh, so quick thank you to Speed Gaming for hosting myself, the tournament, and uh, the many other events and races that are ongoing. Uh, please support Speed Gaming at both twitch.tv slash speedgaming and youtube.com slash at speedgaming channel. Thank you. Hello Speed Gaming! Welcome to the next match of the Metal Prime Randomizer Tournament. Today we have a very special one, Jeff Gaines Games vs. Interslice. I'm here in the commentator booth together with Tokapa. Hello, how are you? Uh, hello. I'm, uh, big, just big chillin'. <laughs> As usual. I am very hyped for this race. Also, we have Ivy Paw sitting here for uh, the tracking. Thanks for that. Yeah. Shout out to the trackers. They do they do the hard work, so we don't have to. <laughs> exactly. So we are in week one of the Metro Prime Randomizer Tournament 2023, which means we are playing with the odd weekly settings. We have basically the vanilla start charge beam as starting item and beginner's trick knowledge which means we only see beginner's tricks required we can still see higher uh, higher knowledge and so on within the race but every other twist till now is not active we're getting close to week two actually it's only a couple of days now yeah, I think as far as advanced knowledge goes, we're sure to see some of that from. Uh, we're sure to see plenty of that from Inner Slice. Uh, I'm not personally familiar with uh, Jeff that much, but uh, they've they've done a couple weeklies, so I'm sure. Jeff. That, uh, Jeff got has some, some knowledge. knowledge. Yeah, yeah, Jeff has definitely has some knowledge. That's why I'm hyped for this race. This could be a really really good one. I'm de I'd say I'm definitely hoping for an interesting seed. Um, last few seeds feels like it's been pretty straightforward after a uh, somewhat tumultuous start to round one of the tournament. Absolutely. So. And we're starting. Right up first, we're going to see a trick named Space Jump first, where we basically abuse that Samus has no speed cap when she's moving sideways. Which means using the scan visor, we can target an object, dash from this object, and release the target fun function, which will give us a good amount of speed. And we can easily get with that, and we can easily get the alcove item which would normally be space jump yeah and bombs on bombs and landing site that's funnily enough that was the same spot uh, the last race i commentated so uh, depending on where morph was in a pretty bad location in that one so depending on where that is that could really uh influence the start of the race absolutely but both immediately go for the artifact hands I'm going to pull up something so I can write them down. We have six artifacts required in Auto Weekly. Which basically function as the keys of this game to go to the final bosses. Picking up Arius, dude. That is, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm getting, I'm getting like, I'm getting like flashbacks. I feel like <laughs> this may very well be directing us into uh, more of being somewhere in Magbor, but it's still early. Um, I mean, if if I'm if I'm getting that Varia super early, I'm definitely 
at least thinking about making the early play to Magmar, despite how With risky the... it is. I don't the think Inner Slice is going to have any problems, but... Uh... With the uh, but with bombs in uh, landing side, I would actually play for multiple first, then save warp. Otherwise, we would leave Lava Lake out isolated. Or we had to do basically a double return. Now, uh, I think that's definitely a good point. But uh, the interesting thing is, like, it's like so many of these round one matchups. It's You've got a definite favorite, and you've got a definite underdog. And when when you talk about definite favorites, you can't get much more definite than Inner Slice. Yeah. So, and like I always talk about when it comes to that sort of matchup, um, could be very, you know, how will the underdog um, route that, taking that into account? Going for the early Magmar plays potentially really interesting um but... although magma would right now not be in logic the way how the prime games work is even though we have it with in total 250 missiles only one missile expansion is the missile launcher which would uh, which is logically placed to allow the players to use the missiles but instead of let's say metro prime echoes we aren't forced to pick up launcher but with the items that we have right now on hive mecha we will have a choice of three items it will either be space jump morph ball or missile launcher but after no no obvious uh, majors to see in chosen which is rare uh well i mean that main power bomb gonna want to get that as soon as possible yeah and there's grapple beam so and uh i believe it looked like ice beam on grapple ledge i did not get a clear look i was it. unsure if that was ice beam or ice spread actually uh it looked i mean to me it looked too bright to be spreader but again did not get a good enough look at that um and the grap the uh grapple beam in Grapple Beam in Room Gallery uh, certainly suggests that a high possibility that that Grapple Ledge is important. Mm hmm. I'm pretty sure. Unfortunately, Morph Ball not in any garbage location today, so. Now the question is, do the players save warp to get their bombs immediately, or are they gonna stick around in Chozo and return later? It looks like Jeff is going for the safe warp immediately. Yeah, and I think bombs are just too important to have in the early game to leave them off for that long. Yeah, I agree. I like the play to get bombs as soon as we can, especially if it's landing side and we have immediate accessibility to it. Yeah. I think Inner Slice just thinking, having seen the artifact up there on Vault, or, uh, on vault Ledge, that just going to grab that, get that out of the way now, and not have to worry about it later. And also get the information of what's in Vault, because that could end up being <clears throat> really important. Vault is can be really awkward to route in sometimes. We're going to take a look at Frigate Crash side. Logically, it's not accessible right now. Oh, yes, with Grapple Beam, it is. It is a logic. Oh, that looks like X ray. Could be a potential root cave play. Well done by Jeff to get that NSJ. It can be very tricky to find the right spot there. Yeah. Not yet logical, we still need space jump for root cave to be fully in logic. But we're getting close to it. And with morph ball and bombs, I think that both players will easily do the Arbor Chamber out of bounds.
But right now it looks like Jeff is in the lead, really. Not by much, but still. Oh god, wave and wave and Arbochem mean that plasma can't even be locked by wave, which basically says okay, plasma can't be locked behind sixty percent of the game. <laughs> I thought I, that's not nearly garbage enough for my preference, but uh, mm -hmm. like I've been saying, the trend so far, the trend recently seems to have been for uh, very straightforward leads. Well, week two with randomized elevator should shuffle that a bit. And I, <clears throat> I think it, I think it definitely will. The settings are only getting crazier. Let's get a peek at the top rune shrine. Look like an E-tank. I... Think that was an E-tank. Could be wrong though. I... Uh, I thought I saw like a speck of green in there, but... That might just be what I see on the restream. Maybe my color balance is off. Oh, that is a suit okay. entry. Okay, that's interesting. That could be phase and or gravity. But interest lies is does not seem that interested in checking which suit it is. Because we can actually pretty easily get a uh, get a, basically a sneak peek on what suit is in the tree. Yeah, the thing about that is that uh, phase on isn't really useful until the end. Oh, that's well, actually, way... Was rave. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, the thing about phase on is you don't really need it until final, until really until essence at all, and so you could very well just leap and um, inner slice knows how to do a lot of stuff without gravity, so you can <clears> definitely <throat> leave that off for a fairly long time. Yeah. So with a good amount of knowledge you can actually skip basically every gravity requirement but having the knowledge of where phase and suit is early game is really powerful because it means that they don't have to rush final bosses after collecting all the artifacts since even if we don't have every beam if we get all the artifacts and kill red layer we can get a phase and suit hint in the impact crater, which will tell us the region where safe, uh, where phase and suit can be found. It is Schrodinger's check, at least. <clears throat> if you remember to check Ruined Gallery, it will never have progression. If you forget to check it all, though, there's always yeah. gonna be progression. But the imperative there is that uh, if you remember that it exists, then it won't have anything important. If you, exactly. but if you remember and you deliberately ignore it, that's an entirely different thing. At least in my personal experience. But neither player really wanted to leave that out for good reasons. Jeff did not get info about the tree as far as I see. That's... <laughs> I 
think that was ice. Maybe. I don't know. I was wrong about it before, so. Definitely a beam. Plasma Are you beam. For real? <laughs> Are you kidding me? So, what Baha, is... you were right. It was an early plasma beam. <laughs> what is wrong with this? What is wrong with Randomania? What was the ice beam? Uh, beam. There, there, I mean, it's got to be magma pool because that was absolutely. I'm certain that was a beam. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. ice beam. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh god. <clears throat> oh god. The, what, I mean, what makes that fascinating though is that it opens. Is that once you get that power bomb, as soon as you get either. You're gonna have them as soon as you have either space or boost. As yeah. soon as you get that power bomb, you've got pretty much the entire game opened up to you. Which can be that... tough to route on, especially if we still are looking for spider ball, which will be required, or super missiles, which could be required right now. Yeah. Could very easily lead these players on a wild goose chase. And that could I mean, depending on how Jeff routes that, that could end up being good for Jeff, because Inner Slice is much more likely to play the standard uh, the standard routing game of just maximizing checks. Or I should not necessarily maximize the checks, but maximize the value. So. But one, one thing about Inner Slice, and the thing, like, obviously their movement's great. No one doubt would say otherwise, but their real strength is their intuition. They have a really yeah. uncanny ability to find where the seed wants them to go. But that comes with the experience of playing rando. If you're able to read, uh, to see how the logic reads, this can be a huge, huge strength of yours. However, if, uh, if the runner decides to go too far out of logic, this can also be a very dramatic change in the events. So, as the as a runner, you will have to find a good balance between doing tricks you know and going out of logic for checks, um, and still following the string of the randomizer. Yeah, I did not actually. I don't actually remember seeing in a slice pick the artifact up, but they went in that direction. If they didn't pick it up, then it was a <laughs> something went very wrong. So. I actually only know that Jeff picked it up. I don't know right now. Yeah. Um, now, right now presents an interesting possibility for divergence. Uh, Inner Slice is heading towards, or at least, checking Gathering Hall. And. Oh. And Spider Ball. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a <clears throat> neat item. Yeah. Okay. And Inner Just, Slice is uh... heading in the direction of Zoid. Now, this is potentially. Or actually is... Okay, no, that was uh, Dynamo. So potentially, if I were Jay, I would be thinking about making the Magma play. Because you got that early Varia. You know, Inner Slice is pro... I mean, you have to figure Inner Slice is probably heading towards Zoid. So potentially, if you find something good in... Uh, like Space Jump and Magma, that could end up being a huge boon. I wouldn't like the play to let Upper Dynamo be isolated with getting Spire and Gathering Hall, though. I think checking Gathering Hall is the right play. Yeah. Um, but. But I had a, that's that. that is one reason why I like to check Gathering Hall before I went into Watery Hall. Uh, I had so many seats by now where Spider was in Gathering Hall. <clears throat> oh, those were some good drops. <laughs> and that's Spider for Jeff. And... Oh? Okay, going immediately to Dynamo. Yeah, I, I like think, the play. I think that makes sense. Like, I mean, they have they have the check. info. Yeah, this is a check that's very easy to forget about. And it's, it's super cool. isolated right now because they have the info about the underwater item being basically nothing. Yeah. 
So if they don't check it now where they are new to the item, they will have to make a huge way around it for the rest of the seed. So I really like the play to get this early. What's it gonna be? Ah. Yep. Unfortunately. Now, one thing uh, talked about in the last race I commentated was uh, how prominent Tower of Light has been in a lot of the seeds we've seen so far, thanks to the logic changes, and what's interesting here is that no normally you almost always get up there with space jump, but it is, they have everything needed to get at least into that area. And then you still need boost ball. With, yeah, minus, yeah, minus boost. Um, and Tower of Light, of course, still needs space jump, but... Tower Chamber is potentially an interesting po interesting possibility. The first of the rare me uh, Metroids. So, basically, since we started with Charge Beam in this preset, and we only have six artifacts, there are a, t a total of seven nothings in the pool, which basically are a filler item, and they don't give the player something. These items are basically replaced with a Metroid item model that is glitched out. So it looks like Jeff is indeed making the Magmore play. I, like I said, I respect it. Nice, sellable. I'm trying to think what the worst possible location for Space Jump would be right now. I guess... I guess... Ghosts? Question mark? That would require supers. Hmm. Yeah? I mean, if it's a really funny seed hit <laughs> and they get supers and a uh, boost ball, it could be Tower Chamber, couldn't it? With, if that's gravity in tree? That should put Tower Chamber even NSJ in logic, if I'm not completely wrong. I'm not 100% sure. But that would be a funny spot for space. So yeah, both runners don't want to isolate Dynamo. <laughs> Legendary S chain research lab Aether. Well, with Dorando, that is way more likely to happen again. Graph morph bombs as beginners. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not. I believe space jump is logically required to do to get to workstation. But I might be wrong about that. At the very least, it is it is somewhat challenging to uh, traverse that section without workstation. Or, ah, sorry, without a space jump. And it is worth noting that no e tanks. Yeah. We've we've seen one, we think, but it's not accessible yet. So. Is Jeff going for the NSJ climb? No. <clears throat> yeah, I think I would probably leave Warrior Shrine out for now. Um, yeah, it's not, me too, since... It's not in logic. Lo it's not in logic and we don't have power bumps. If yeah, we would have power bumps, bumps, this would be a completely different story. Yeah. Although I have to say, I don't like, with the loadout right now, pushing it to Fen from this side, actually. With Wave Beam in hand, you can do so much stuff in Fen that you easily forgot to check, e uh, to check early Magma. If your opponent goes for early Magma and finds, let's say, Space Jump in Storage Cavern, 
and this can be uh, this can be really bad. Yeah, but I think going back to you know what I keep harping on, that's the ex play you would expect Inner Slice to make. Mm -hmm. So if Je if Jeff has that in the back of their mind, and I don't know, I have talked to them about it, but if that's a thing they have in the back of their mind, they are definitely going to try to take every micro optimization they can get. Definitely. I mean, they're going to need it. Interslice is a very tough opponent. As far as I know, Interslice was seed of place one in the tournament. Yeah, Interslice, of course. I mean, Interslice resume speaks for itself. Obviously, number one, number one seed, uh, 2020, uh, 2020 champion. Uh, second place in 2021. Um, one. A ton of weeklies, like mm -hmm. Inner Slice. I think most people would agree wholeheartedly is the best prime random player. Um. There it is. Okay. Space jump and ice runes east. So that's. Definitely an example of where that's going to pay off. Two Could more artifacts left. I think really one was Shoreline's Storage Cavern. That's good if he goes for the way back. And maybe maybe that's what uh, Jeff was thinking about. Uh, yeah. They decided not to go for that early. Magmor was... That's one check that you know is I... not going to be anything, so... I think they did, but uh -huh. I think it just lies bit CIs. Is that Phazen? That's me. It's so hard to tell. Oh, but Interslice has to go for the NSJ movement for this one. It is gravity, which means gravity. supers are required for Phazen suit. So that's interesting. So, with Interslice's knowledge, that's actually interesting. Interslice knows that. That tree is phase on, and or rather that phase on is in the tree. Jeff doesn't. So depending on where supers is, potentially Jeff could end up getting delayed a long time. <clears throat> um, even if they met, even if they get the Chozo hint. Yeah, we also have to really give props to Interslice for making that jump first try NSJ. That's a really tough jump. Getting Triclops pitch standables, NSJ is not very easy. The problem with the out of bounds in main plaza is uh, Jeff actually never got the info about Phasen suit being in tree or a suit in general being in tree. I guess that's true. Yeah. Couldn't see it, but Jeff says they don't need it. See, so yeah, Interslice is clearing early Magma before heading to Fen. Which is understandable, given the loadout that they have. They can full clear Fen till half point. When they will get locked out by ice. Yeah, and like I was saying, this is definitely more of the standard play. Would be to check, get these checks out of the way. But as soon as the players will find a PB expansion, I think both players will most likely go for the ice beam. Well, as, well, Jeff can get that PB expansion. Uh, or sorry, the main PBs in the half pipe as soon as they um, yeah right they, they were back there so right they found space jump and Inner Slice is gonna find space jump fairly shortly so <clears throat> uh. 
Ice Burner? Yeah, that's Ice Burner. Oh, rip. I think checking uh, Pen Canyon, at least getting a view of the item isn't the worst idea. But given that they are low health, makes me kind of worried about the Shigoths in this room. And Inner Slice picks up the first E tank of the game. Now, what's in, what's interesting about this is that what, with what we have so far, you know, as soon as where are the where are the other artifacts? The storage cavern and ice runes west. Okay, so Inner Slice is going to have the ability to pick those up quickly, and assuming that. Uh, Unless there's one missing that we forgot about. I think Inner Slice will have all six and could just potentially go for Ridley. Well, actually, no, Inner Slice. That's actually the thing. Inner Slice doesn't have to go for Ridley right now because they already know where Phazon Suit is. Exactly. So, um, that could. It'll be interesting to see if that ends up playing a role in the outcome. I think so too. That's what I meant with I think, uh, I, I, right I wanna, with the loadout pushing into. I want to say Jeff maybe wants to get this item and then save warp from here, possibly, just to not leave this item out. But yeah, you're right. That's because if they do that, then storage cavern is going to be quite awkward to route in. I feel like even safe warping from from here will take a lot more time than just going back and checking early magma from transport access yeah. to lava lake. No. I'm no, gonna... Jeff saves. Okay. That's yeah. I mean, I don't hate getting at least to courtyard and checking that item, but. It definitely feels a little bit awkward, especially if you end up having to come back here. The question is: Is Jeff going? Uh, is Jeff about to go for the Ridley fight if they get the last artifact? We may have the knowledge where uh, Face and Suit is, but yeah. they don't have the knowledge. And that's where this. That potentially becomes an issue because if Jeff sees Chozo, they could potentially, and they don't check the tree, they could potentially go a long time in Chozo without finding it. Mm hmm. I'm, cu I'm curious to see how much Inner Slice checks. I guess without going back to get ice. Yeah, both players without ice, both players are pretty limited in their ways how to route through fan. Ice beam would make mm, uh, ice beam would make routing fan a lot easier, since both players could just go through laps and immediately get out of research core without having to do dark laps. And another interesting thing about this seed uh, is given the paltry amount of E-tanks that players have gotten, that could actually affect how they decide to approach the final final bosses. Because, I mean, I'm sure Inner Slice feels confident in themselves enough to do it on low amounts of E. I don't know how Jeff feels about that. Because so far Jeff doesn't have any E-tanks and trying to do final bosses on zero e tanks Ugh. it is hard yeah
I, but I still feel like this is going to be a big race of who will get the first PB expansion or main uh, or who will get main PBs first, given that both players now have space jump. Yeah, exactly. And with Jeff at Lava Lake, I think they will most likely go and get that Ice Beam now. Oh god, Jeff! Oh! We have a serious E-Tank problem in this seat. Health management is going to be really important for this seat, I think, you. Interest like safe warping. So most likely, Interslice is also gonna go for the Ice Beam play. Yeah. Which I respect. Yeah. Getting Ice Beam makes a lot of things very much easier. Yeah. I the it, the thing is, this routing actually worked out quite well for Jeff, um, because they were able to take that, go through that, you know. Uh, I guess reverse Magmore. Yeah. Get back up through Lava Lake and pick pick up the artifact while they're at it. So. And even then, uh. Having PBs will also give them additional checks. Until now, supers can still be locked behind PBs. I feel like the biggest game changer right now would be if Jeff would try to look into the tree with X-Ray. This would really, really hope, play for them. I really hope they do, because... That's going to make that a much more interesting race. I, I think the main thing is that Jeff might be thinking that zero E tanks is not enough to safely do really on. Oh. And they are going to check it. Okay, good. So they are going to get that information. Jeff forgets that they have x-ray. And there we got it. Those were some happy power beam shots. Now both players know what they're racing for. Both players need supers. And, and both... boost, boost ball yeah. would also be really nice. Yeah, and they're both going into uh, tower at about the exact same time, so... Jeff finally picking up an E-Tank. With the amount of items in this tournament alone that were required in Tower of Flight, I was all, I would also always opt to do Tower of Flight early. Yeah, there's no reason not to now. They have everything they need, so... Exactly. And, uh, and of course, this is just how the seed has forced them to route it. In order do, we to get know, do we know which artifact Interslice is missing? I am not sure. We, I think there was some confusion over whether they actually picked up the vault or the vault ledge artifact. Right, right. Because nobody seems to have actually seen it, even though there was no reason for Enderslice not to have gotten it. So. Now let's see, Tower of Light, what do you have for us? <laughs> Nothing. Zilch. Wow. That's the second of seven. Yeah. And this right here is a perfect example of 
why sometimes it's so hard to go up against someone to the skill level of Inner Slice, because Jeff came in here before Inner Slice, and Inner Slice is already gone. Yeah, that's the consistency of actually doing the tricks. <laughs> Inner Slice, I guess, just wanting to double check. <laughs> Both players are probably gonna go for uh, Ice Beam now. Yeah, and now it's just who finds supers first. And and the, the hard part here is with every, with Ice Beam, with Wave Beam, Plasma Beam, everything they have, the whole game's open to them. So there's yeah. really no right way to route it i'm just begging for both players to not have them in fungal hole tree is the phasing suit yeah oh and while we're on this while we're on the subject uh shout out to uh toaster for changing the nothing model to the metroid because two years ago that would have Nothing's looked like suits, and it would have been very easy for someone to get confused. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember. Thankfully, you can, of course, peek that item, just to make sure, but... Could have been a <laughs> another item in another point of the game, where you could actually only see it with x-ray. Yeah. Now, if I'm in Jeff's position, I might be... <clears throat> I might think about the vlogger play because people do not I mean, like to do vlogger. I think Jeff practiced the out of bounds for the tree item, so they could also up for this one or give it a try. But safety saving, as Sam well, already that, said. Yeah, that. I believe we determined that that requires floaty jump. The only way no, to get no. that. It uh, was required to get floaty jump, but I think two hours after this, Sam, correct me, but shortly after the race, I know that Sam posted a video on how to get the item without floaty jump. Interesting. All right. I'll take your word for it. Nope. Okay. Where is... Where... Now I'm really curious. I thought Jeff boost was... and crossway. I thought Jeff was um, heading in the direction of Flagra, but they seem to have a different idea. So maybe they really just wanted to safety save and will try the out of bounds now. Oh, it's thermal in crossway. Interest. Which also gives us now logical <laughs> entrance to frigate. It seems like an out. Yeah, this is an out of bounds play by Jeff. I think Jeff sees the opportunity to do the out of bounds. Inner Slice, I know you know that that tunnel is not faster. You might, you might Secret be a big game tunnel. Player, but... <laughs> boost isn't needed yet, but it's always nice to have boost, especially for the Ridley fight. So we have Interslice pushing hard into late Chozo. And we have Jeff trying to get the item out of bounds. If Jeff can get the item out of bounds and get back inbounds, this could be a game changer and could play into Jeff's favor. 
I mean, depending on how long it takes them. If Interslice finds super soon, then. I then this could, don't yeah. Really make much of a difference. I'm not familiar with this trick. Not sure how difficult it is or how panicky it is. So. It's not the easy. Uh, it's not the easiest from what I've heard, but I'll have to try it myself. Although it seems that Jeff got it. They got it. Now they ah. just need to draw warp. Incredible. Incredible play by Jeff. Yeah, Baha pointing out that <laughs> Jeff's still only on that single E tank. So. Yeah, but given on how comfortable Jeff feels with combat, they can definitely pull this off. I'm not saying they can't. No, no, I'm, but it's no, gonna be I'm tough. Not, yes, def I'm it's... definitely not uh, trying to mal ma malign any. Especially any without, here. especially without boost, it's gonna be a tough fight against Ridley. <clears throat> but this is incredible. Jeff trained. Uh, Jeff trained for this trick to learn it. Just in case something could be in tree, and the first seed Jeff plays is, of course, basically on a silver plate for him. With Phazen in tree. And we've already we've already seen one race decided by uh, having something quite important in tree. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I know you're personally familiar with that, so. Mm-hmm. Wasn't the funniest seed. <clears throat> but no really this is <laughs> this is a moment where again you can see that hard training can pay off really well because having this patient suit now without the supers requirement is can be very powerful depending on how deep into the game supers are hidden And Jeff, I think, wisely going to do at least a little bit of hunting for E tanks. Yeah, definitely. Or e tanks or boost ball. ball. Yeah, that would also help. I'm not <laughs> sure if it's the first race of Jeff in the tournament. Uh, this is Jeff's first tournament, so... First prime tournament, I should say. I'm not familiar with their other endeavors, but... I think this is slightly different than Inner Slice's last uh, round one loss, but yeah, that is it potentially fascinating if Jeff manages to finish it out. How much missiles does Jeff right now have? 50? 60. Even missiles could be tough for the final bosses, so getting at least well, a few more miners wouldn't be too bad. I mean, yeah, for Ridley, that's true. Uh, but no supers, no ice spreader, not really going to make a huge difference on Exo. So. Yeah, but if we find no boost, then 60 missiles is going to be a very close call for Ridley. Depending on how they go. Kind of surprised. Interslice uh, going for Hydro Access Tunnel. Yeah, they didn't check uh, Life Grove first. Or did they? 
didn't look like they don't it. have boost. You're right. They, they don't. probably don't want they're, to. Risk yeah, they're not ready. Falling down. They're not ready. They don't want to <laughs> go for the bomb jump. So the bomb jump is a extremely hard check. All right, one E tank final bosses. Here we go. I respect the play, especially since Jeff has a lot of pressure fighting against seed one. I would always go for immediate final bosses, but this is going to be very hard. And now the tanks are in the face of mines, I told it. I don't think Ridley is going to be the biggest problem with the E. I'm more worried about Axel. Well, there's but a boost ball. Question is... Oh, boost ball and flame throw. Gonna go for it. I think so. It's not the biggest way back. Yeah, and of course, Inner Slice has no way of knowing where Jeff is right now. So exactly. <clears throat> well, boost would make uh, boost would help Inner Slice in sense of speed and especially with. Uh, Phase and research coming up soon, or elite research. Having yeah. boost ball would be a real blessing. So yeah, they're gonna get it. Oh god, supers and life growth. That could be worse. Uh, that could be bad. Up to now, Jeff plays this really, really well. Inter uh, should we expect Interslice to full clear mines at this point? Or do you think uh, he's just gonna just, uh, or do you think they're gonna just, uh, debout at some point? It's hard to tell for me. I... Ugh. That's... That's so... T that's, it's just, it's, it's a tough call to make. Like I said, you've got so many options, like... And... I... I really don't know. Looks like they're going... No, it looks like they're dipping. Gonna... 
go back and check Light Grove now that they have that boost, so. Nice snipe by Jeff. But yeah, Jeff made it through Ridley. Only two bosses are between them and the victory. Impact Crater safe has to be there, yeah. They need to play this as safe as possible with one E-Tank. It's gonna be absolutely fascinating to me if that one decision by v ends up radically altering the course of this turn. <laughs> yeah. This is incredible. How much impact one race can have for another race. And how hardly hard practice can pay off. Exoskip would TP a galaxy. Uh, maybe not a galaxy brain play, but definitely, uh, <laughs> something. Yeah. But... So what we're about to witness is the first of the two, let's say, phases of Metro Prime, the final boss of the game. The first one we call Metro Prime Exo, which basically takes all four beams in the requirement by only being vulnerable to one of the beams. Exo is split into four subchambers where another beam will always apply to it. So basically, we and for the first subchamber we have power and wave beam. For the second subchamber we're getting ice beam in the pool. For the third we're getting plasma beam and for the fourth Exo will get the ability to swap between the beams on their own will. But with no <clears throat> beam combos whatsoever, this fight can really be a struggle, especially without E. Right, Wave Buster, but is Wave Buster really going to be the helpful beam combo here? Out with this many misses. Exactly. <laughs> maybe if they get maybe if they get down to last base and it turns to wave, but This is going to be tough. So what most people would try to do here is we can actually manipulate the uh, the boss itself to spam the melee attack which will make it easier to hit him and will make the fight a lot easier to stand. But it doesn't seem like that's in Jeff's interest. Alright, subchamber 3, I think, right? So, halfway point. Yeah. 
Yeah, and as we can see, uh, right now it started with Plasma Beam, which means now, as uh, now Exo has all four beams possible. But we can still deal a little bit of extra damage in the moment where Exo turns around. Since it's still in the beam phase from the round before, we can again then shoot it with a charge boom shot. Yeah, Jeff placed this really good kill now. They really have to be very, very careful. Gosh, if your slice finds supers here. Okay. Oh god, supers on PCA. That doesn't mean it can't still be, like, on OP, but... Fortunately, if Jeff is able to pull this fight, in the next phase in Metro, uh, on the Essence fight, there will be health pickups. And given the amount of E-Tanks that Jeff has, it should be enough to full heal them. Yeah. After a race in the tournament, there was found a way how to get the main plaza tree item from out of bounds. So September 4 is where it gets really funny, because now EXO will no longer only switch beams after charging at you like this. It can basically swap beams whenever it wants now. Exactly, can also charge randomly if it wants to. That's a good point out, thank you. Feels like at this point we might we might potentially end up finding super missiles in the credits. Yeah. Not over yet. I guess those aren't. I guess those this are could get a problem now because these orbs still can damage you during a cutscene. I, I don't think they that the orbs damage you, but it happened plasma, to me. Okay, I know plasma orbs b will bury you, and then you can take damage from that. But it's yeah. been so long, I can't. So this is the essence fight, which would basically put the visors in as in requirement. Although we only have one visor, and that's X-Ray. So how this fight is going to work is uh, we can't shoot Essence without any uh, with our beams that we have. The only option that we can hurt Essence is by going into the phasing pits that the boss will spawn, and with that entering hyper mode. Hyper mode actually gives us the phasing beam which damages the essence. The strat Jeff is using here is called attack cancel, where we basically try to stall essence as long as possible, so it will immediately spawn a new pit. And now this is where the fun begins, since Jeff does not have thermal, we can't see essence in the next, uh, in the next phase. The only way how we could spot Essence right now is by using the scan visor to see the scan point of it. There are supers. Oh, where, All right. where Just, are they? Justice has to survive now. Yeah. 
typically when I'm missing a visor, I usually like to do uh, pool cancels uh, if I'm missing the next visor in the rotation, just to get as much damage getting as the max, Yeah, getting the max damage out, yeah. But I think people are generally more comfortable with uh, attack cancels. Especially in this situation, yeah. They're going for a very dangerous play right here. So I respect the going safe uh, version of this. Interslice has now also reached go mode with much better loadout than Jeff. We also want to try and not and try to not let Essence get close to the Exo in the background, to the Exoskeleton. Because if that happens, there is a high risk of it, uh, what we call a pool cancelling us. Which means that it will just swap visors and not spawn a phase and pitch below itself. This could be GG. That is wow. it. That is GG. Amazing. Just it's incredible. Just as inner slice. Let's see. This is just, incredible. Yeah, just as inner slice gets phase on suit. Unbelievable. What a play. Holy moly, what a play. This is incredible. My heart. My heart. My heart. <laughs> <laughs> GG Jeff. All right, we have Jeff here for an interview. Oh my god. How are your thoughts? Oh, I... I panicked a lot with the E-Tanks. The All the decisions where you saw me just sit still looking where I was going to go next was trying to figure out could I actually beat EXO with one, with one E-Tank. Yeah. I, I, you absolutely made the correct decision to play it safe there no one's yeah yeah i, I but the thing was i figured I, I when i saw that phase on suit was in the tree i i had to go for it i just learned this trick this week and uh i figured one risky play has to go immediately into another risky play <laughs> <laughs> this is interest slice see. Yeah. seeing how one race can affect the next race is incredible and seeing we were debating whether or not you're going to go for the out of bounds in main plaza and getting the item out of bounds but yeah par part really... of the reason why i uh i took that save uh in gathering hall was because i didn't know if i was gonna do burn dome for e-tanks all my plans once i saw uh that uh, what's it called? Um, plasma beam and ice beam were right next to each other. All the beams were together. And I just I just needed E-Tanks at that point. <laughs> that was all <laughs> that was going through my head. This was incredible. If I'm allowed to say. And very, very intense to watch, actually. Especially... How was uh, Interslice doing? You were entering Essence basically a minute before Interslice found their super missiles. Yeah, Interslice found phase on about the same time as you finished. I shouldn't say found phase on, a pained phase on, but you know. Got what I mean. it. So oh, yeah, not only Exo with one E tank, but Boostless Ridley with one E tank as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really just well done on the. I mean, just the whole thing, but especially the final bosses to be able to pull that off, so. This was very amazing. Interslice, your thoughts on the seat? <laughs> Supers were not good. What was it? Pike Supers. access? Yeah, it was... Transport access. Whatever that transport access, yeah. yeah. Uh... I, uh, I resumed my stream so that we could get the... Uh... We get the hints. I don't know if it's back on the, the restream yet. Uh, well, mine's frozen, so... Mine too. Yeah, okay. 
Hopefully everyone can hear us in uh it's like the stream's frozen too, so I think uh the only thing we didn't see the only thing we didn't find was flamethrower. Oh no, that was in Pendrana Canyon. So let's see. Oh, boost, I thought boost. that was ice I thought that was ice spreader. So oh, no. there we go. Ice scanned it. Boost okay. ball was in storage depot A, so wasn't yep, finding yeah. that. Got that. Uh we've got Cargo uh, freight lift, LMAO, dude. Cargo freight lift. Access, yeah, ice spreader, cargo freight lift, flamethrower. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't validate my seed. And then, man, getting that early uh, uh, plasma beam really helped grabbing those artifacts, since all of them were <laughs> in Jos er, in uh, Fendrana behind the ice. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating thing is because the seed forced you to route back to Chozo to get Ice Beam, and you, by that point you already had the artifacts. You were in the perfect position to be able to go for that out of bounds. But funny enough, Interslice got info on that phase and suit ASAP, and you got it a lot later. Oh, with the peak. Uh, yeah, but Jeff, you did realize that you had X-ray, right? <laughs> no, obviously not. There were a lot of things that, uh... Where the race nerfs are in. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a lot of things that just... Uh, a lot of basics that did not go well on my end. Uh, it was that... That learning that main plaza tree skip saved me. I was really glad that that was found. Thank you, Sam. Well, I guess thank you, uh, Vertigo, and then thank you, Sam, for filming the easier, uh... These are method. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick that one up. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are after. gonna be picking that up after this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I I knew of the method where you get floaty jump and get it out of bounds, but I haven't done that in years, so I wasn't gonna try that. Plus, I had gravity pretty early. Yeah, that's true. You couldn't have gone in it. Couldn't have done it anyway. So. Oh, man. Well, what an experience that was. Absolutely. And, uh, this Jeff, was... I was just going to say congratulations on becoming the fifth person ever to beat Inner Slice in a tournament race. What's, where does this I... count? What's that? Where does this count? I want to see the count. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can, I, can name, I can name three of them for you off the top of my head. Well, so I far, I, I'm I, I undefeated, I so, was. you know, I'm now the one to beat, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this... and also, yeah, congratulations on making life next round tremendously worse for someone who takes an L in the first round. Yeah. yeah this, happened, this happened last year, too. I, I lost to Sasquatch on the first round, Yeah. and I had to race against much lower-seated people for a lot of the tournament. I did not think that it would get this close in the end. But like, my nerves were already down because of the one E-Tank final boss rush. Yeah, so I guess that's that's what saved me really then. Because yeah, I was yeah. going to waste a lot of time looking for E-Tanks. But with Interslice achieving Go mode, it was really the... It's either Jeff kills Essence right here, right now, or Interslice goes home with the win. Yeah. Because Interslice had a lot of setup in the end. I was they hoping had and so on and so on. Yeah. I was just hoping that supers were in PCA or something like that and I would be afforded a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean in PCA. In in the end you've had just about enough time. So oh, Did you well, say that they did Interslice? Oh, yeah, for sure. I saved yeah. a lot this race. <laughs> I, I, one thing we were talking about um, before you went to Chozo to get that ice beam was whether or not, you're, since you didn't have the information at that point, whether or not you were going to do Ridley just to get that hint. And I think obviously in the end you made the decision that worked out, but uh, were you at any point thinking about doing Ridley before then? 
for the the hint uh yeah. no i was going to do ridley if i found the boost ball but since i had not checked main plaza yet and it just so happened to be phase on i was like i'm gonna go for this no longer it, it was mainly just if i got boost i had all the artifacts i'd go to ridley mm -hmm. if i found phase on on the way great uh but I was hoping, I was sort of hoping some of my extra routing that I did, if you're wondering why I went to like Root Cave and Arbor Chamber was, I was like E-Tanks or, yeah, no, or yeah. uh, Boost Ball. No, that's definitely what we were thinking. Yeah. yeah. But well, the seed. <laughs> well, GG's. GG's. That was great. Thank you for uh, being my first introduction to uh, tournament races. <laughs> I think you're going to do pretty well in this tournament. Yeah, so, as evidenced already. Too. Yeah. But my my biggest thing I've got going yeah. for me is tricks. I am not very fast. Is my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to work on my room times a lot. That's one of my major setbacks. And then. Uh, just confidence and routing. I spent a lot of time just kind of sitting still debating. It's like, do I go forward? Do I go back? That's uh, it's something that I definitely got to work on as well. It's like one hour in-game time, I just realized. Yeah, I'm sure this could be like a sub-40 in-game time if uh, <laughs> someone re this. Oh, that's okay. Uh... Jeff, do you know if anything else is planned for speed gaming today? For speed gaming two? Uh, not to my knowledge. I know that we've got three races tomorrow. I think. For yeah, uh, the schedule. Yeah, tomorrow is packed. Let's see. Wednesday the seventh, four p.m. Uh, these are all Eastern. Uh, Bash versus uh, Death King. Five p.m. is Cestrion versus Cosmonaut and. Also 5 p.m. Oh, just kidding. There's two duplicates there. And then at 6 p.m. it's uh, CZ versus Diggleth. So, oh, and then 8 p.m. is Schwartz versus Avina. <laughs> That's four races. Jeez. Then I would say this was an incredible seat with two very talented runners. So just remember to leave both runners a follow. Their, channel, uh, their, what's it called? Their Twitch channels should be marked in the chat. Also in the chat you have the Metro Prime randomizer brackets where you can get updated about the certain groups that are facing each other. Be sure to drop a follow for the commentary, especially for uh, also for Ivy Paw. Thanks again for tracking. This is the job that is the hardest in this, especially if you track for two players at once. Oh yeah, big thing. So, so everyone, any last thoughts on the race? Uh, well, really, GGs again. Yeah, GGs. All right, see you all next mission. Then see you all next mission. Bye.